Hey, it's Rosa59 here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to build this RGB or LED shadow box. And don't forget you can download a free set of plans to build one of these for yourself. To make your LED shadow box, what we're going to do is start with the backs first. I'm just using leftover cedar boards or fence boards, I guess you could say. They're about 5 8 uh, thick. And both edges are round overs. And what we want to do is we want to get rid of that one edge so we can start with a square piece. So I already did that on this edge on the table saw. I got rid of one of the edges so it's nice and square. And then what we want to do is we want to rip it down to four inches in width, which you'll get something that looks like this. Now we want to clean up one of the edges. So I'm just going to cut a little bit off. That way that end is nice and square. them down to your final length which is 24 inches. Just laid out uh, the marks before I went ahead and drilled my holes with a pocket joinery jig, jig by Craig and so I did 4 inches in and then 12 inches in and what I did was I only did it on the two out of the three. So just the two on the ends, I drilled the holes. So you should have six holes in total. And I'm just gonna use some wood glue and put it together. I'm just using inch and a quarter screws. And just got my last one here to put in. I'm just using a clamp to hold everything in place. And there we go. And the back is all together. Now for the side pieces, you want to go ahead and cut them for width and also for the length, you want to head and cut them to width as well, which is two inches. I did not cut the full length of the longer boards to 25 and a quarter yet. The reason for that is, is I want to put these on first the side pieces, which is 12 inches long I cut. And just in case if I happen to have it just a little bit longer for whatever reason, that way then I have a little bit of leeway room of cutting it down to the final width. Now I did forget to mention that you do want to sand uh, the top and bottom before you go ahead and installing your side rails or side pieces. I just went ahead and put a little bit of dab of glue. I had to clamp mine down just a little bit because my boards are a little bit warped. But once we put everything together, it'll be okay. So you just want to slide that in, line everything up on each side. I'm using 18 gauge, inch and a quarter nails long. And one on the ends and one in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and put everything else on. And this is a setup that I used for the long pieces. I just lined up one edge, made a mark, cut it at the saw, and then went ahead, add some glue, and then nailed it up the same way that I did these the other side pieces. Now we're ready to cut out our image. Um, as I provided with the free plans, you just want to attach them all together. And this is the sunset that we're going to be doing. And what I did was to transfer it on my wood. I just used some carbon paper. I just spread it all out and then put the image on top, lined it up from the bottom, the bottom line here because I'm doing the mountain, and then took my pencil and then traced it all out, which I am left with this, and then all this here will be all cut out. And the material that I'm using is just 3 16 uh, plywood. It's actually used more for your flooring. Um, I'll show you on the back here, you can tell it's got all the X's, but won't matter because we're not going to see it but it's just a little bit thicker than an eighth of an inch and it's less than a quarter because I think with quarter it might be too big because we're going to end up layering them up. So I don't want it too thick.
you've got all your images cut out here, I just want to give it a light sanding. And I'm just using my Oberdell sander here, just with ED grit. Just be careful though, because ED grit is coarse, and this is plywood, so you will go through. Um, but you don't want to spend a whole lot of time. All you're doing is just taking the burrs off from the bandsaw, which that's what you see here. And then this side here by my other hand, it's all nice and smooth, which I have sanded. To make the 3D effect, what we're going to be using is paint sticks. I just used Home Depot's brand. Um, it's roughly about an eighth of an inch thick, which is good. I found it worked out great. I used about 15 paint sticks uh, to do this sunset. And what you want to start off with is your paint sticks. Now you can cut them out roughly. This doesn't have to be exact. I just roughly figured how long and depending how spaced. I just roughly estimated on the bottom just a quarter of an inch. I didn't want it to line up just in the bottom just for any reason. If things don't line up 100% I don't want them to show. And just make sure you keep them the distance away from the edge as well. This is just to elevate it just a little bit up to give you that 3D effect. So this was with the sun that I did. And I just used my air nailer, um, just a 23 gauge pin nailer, uh, half inch long. The only thing is the nails did go through, uh, but you just cut the back off. And I'll show you how to do uh, the palm tree in just a minute. I'll show you how to do it. And then for the mountain part here, uh, just was a little bit more trickier because we want to elevate it just a lot more. And this one I ended up using, I'll kind of show it this way, I ended up using one paint stick, then the same plywood for the mountain I put in between here, and then another paint stick, and then glued them together and then nailed them all together. And I was going to leave it kind of like this, but I'm debating because it kind of looks kind of spacious out here. So what I ended up doing was I had some scrap plywood left over and I just made two of these exactly the same and I believe it was roughly four inches and three eighths in width. You can change your width depending how short or how long you want it depending how high you want the sun to be to the top. And I just did two of these exactly the same, like I said, and then just use four paint sticks on each side. And that kind of just gives it the effect. Now, I also did the green direction, if you notice, a different way. And the reason for that is because when you paint it, if the grain happens to show through a bit, it kind of gives it just a little bit of better effect because water obviously would be going this direction and your mountains and your grass kind of look like they're going upwards a bit. So I thought that kind of looked a little bit better um, than just leaving it plain. So for the palm tree, the top part, I added three pieces of just the regular ply here and then just a paint stick on top. And then on the bottom, I added a smaller piece just in the corner here. And then I just glued this one down here and I let it sit for a couple minutes. I found that was easier before I stapled it in. I found that way it um, just didn't move so much on me. So I just feel at the bottom where I need to put it and then I just move my hands and just staple it in. And the handy thing I found at the bottom here was I just use these types of cutting uh, pliers. And just because I don't want these pieces to be flying everywhere, it's a little piece of magnet and I find it just catches it just right on. That way I know they are attached and I don't lose anything. After I cut them, I just forgot to mention that I use a hammer just to hammer them down a little bit. That way then there's no sharpness. And that's what it looks like so far. So for painting, what I used was Kills Max uh, primer. I did one coat of that. And once that was dry, I went ahead and used Bare Alkyd Semi Gloss and I did two coats of that. To attach the back pieces, what we're gonna do is I'm using uh, my pin nailer, again, 23 gauge, uh, one inch long, and also I was using three quarter inch long uh, nails. And I already put the sun, um, the mountain, and then the two water pieces I installed already. And I'll just show you how uh, I'm gonna install 
palm tree here and all I did was I added some glue. I used well bond glue um, just because I don't think wood glue necessarily would stick to this because I have a painted surface. So I know this is kind of like a more heavier type glue. And I just put some green tape in the areas. And the reason for that is, is so when I staple it in, it will be easier to take some white putty. And that's what I do here. I'm just taking some white putty. And that way then you don't get it all over your project. Just easier just to fill it in. And then you can just lift it up and then just paint in that area instead of getting putty all over in one big area. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish puttying up and everything and then I'll probably take some paint and just touch up in those little areas. Now for adding the trim around, I'm just going to add just a little bead of glue on here. And also just a little bit in the corners here. And now you want to go ahead and use your pin nailer again. I'm using about one inch long and I'm just going to staple one in here. Make sure your ends are flush, one in the middle, and there you go. And then you might want to put some in on the sides here as well. Just to keep it from keeping it nice and square. And then tight joints. Now some, some of it may be a little gap. I can add some putty and sand it down. The stain that I used was Minwax Poly Shades Bamboo Mahogany in a satin finish. And I did three coats uh, to get it to the darkness that I wanted. And once it was all completed and dry, uh, then I went ahead and installed my RGB lighting. I drilled my holes up at the top for the sensor because mine comes with a remote and at the bottom I drilled a hole to feed through the wire to go all the way around and it did come with some peel and stick tape, uh, tape at the back but I found it wasn't uh, sticky enough so I ended up just using some super glue just so that it would stick better and I found that worked a much better. And once I installed that and was happy with the way everything was and dry, then I went ahead and went back and just did touch-ups with all with my white uh, paint. So I thought to show you what the back looks like here. And this is what the back looks like. And I'll just zoom in um, at the top here a little bit closer. And right up here at the top um, is the sensor. I think I drilled about a 3 8 hole or so, but just... Uh, read the instructions on uh, your certain lighting to see what size you would have to drill uh, for the sensor hole because yours may be different. And then I just bought those little plastic white clips there that you can see. Uh, it just holds the wire in place and just makes it look a little neater looking. And then at the bottom here, uh, that's where the RGB lighting strip uh, goes into. And I just drilled uh, quarter inch holes, two right beside each other and then just use some epoxy putty to hold everything uh, together. And this is what the final project looks like. And when you put the lights on, it really does come alive. Hope you guys can see the actual effects. I know sometimes it's kind of hard through a camera. I will take some pictures at the end of the video so you kind of can go through those. Hopefully it'll give you a better uh, look at what it actually looks like and just have fun. I mean, go through with the different colors, settings, and everything like that with your remote. Uh, definitely comes alive and makes it um, a really great piece. And if you didn't want to do a sunset uh, setting, you can also do a New York theme you can also do as well. <laughs>
by my channel and go to the video description link below for free plants. Don't forget to comment on this video. If you would like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.